Hi guys, my name is Shada Campbell and this is an 11th apartment video. Today I'm in beautiful, sunny Prince Edward Island, Canada. It's just one of the best places in the whole wide world and I'm going to be living here all summer. So I'm super excited about that. And I'm also excited to share a new craft tutorial with you guys today. We're going to be talking about needle felting and we're going to make this cute little owl that I think you'll just love. Uh, needle felting posts um, are new to my blog, The 11th Apartment, this winter, but they've become some of my most popular uh, material over there. So I thought I'd shift that material over to YouTube and see what you guys think of it. I hope you'll really like it. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So let's just get started. Today's needle felting tutorial is meant for the absolute beginner. The video is almost a half hour long and I go into a lot of detail in regards to this particular owl but also in how to do needle felting itself. So it's perfect if you haven't tried this craft before but if you're a seasoned needle felter you might find the video runs a little long and I plan to do um, some tutorials in the future that just cover design. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the supplies that we'll be using to do needle felting. The most important supply is this stuff right here, and this is called roving. It's wool and it's unspun, so it's just raw wool that's been dyed and colored. And what you're going to be doing is you're actually going to be taking this material and you're going to be um, condensing and shaping it. So it's, this is basically a sculpting craft. Um, so you're going to shape this roving to create, you know, cute little things like these owls and you can really make anything you want. So, so you'll need wool roving, which you can purchase at craft stores. A lot of times yarn or knitting star stores will stock roving. Um, and it is just one of those craft materials that you're going to want to look out for. It's, um, Michael's does have some packages, but they usually, at least the Michael's that I've been to, only have um, small packages. Same with Hobby Lobby, they might have a couple packs and it's sometimes a little bit pricey, but if you find the right wool mill or something like that, you can just get bags of it for next to nothing because it's really, it's not, it's, it's not an expensive material. Um, so just keep that in mind. And what we're gonna use to shape the roving are felting needles. And I have a pack of them here um, and I've taken some out. So that is the felting needle there. And you can see there's a sort of a handle up here where it's smooth, where you can hold it. And then this, um, the tip of the needle is barbed. So there's all these tiny little barbs on there and that's what catches the wool and um, you sort of jab it into the wool repeatedly. And those barbs catch the wool and they tangle the fibers. Um, and that's what helps you to shape the wool and to sculpt it. So wet felting is when you put a sweater in um, the wash and it comes out shrunken and that's because all the fibers have compacted and they got all tangled together and then your sweater looks like it's, you know, made for a baby. So that's, that's actually a process called wet felting that um, can be used um, properly but is often done by me uh, to ruin some of my nicest sweaters. But um, this is a needle felting is also referred to as dry felting and it's, it is a similar process. You're taking these fibers, which right now are all, you know, I guess stretched out and loose and you're compacting and shaping. So you're gonna take that roving, you're gonna start with something large and shape it and condense it into something much smaller and actually quite, quite hard. This isn't, um, you know, it's not soft. You can't sort of push push this little guy in. He's not a squeeze ball. So it's a pretty cool craft. Um, I mean, that's the main thing. You'll want the roving and the needle and the felting needles, which you can buy again at wool stores, but also at craft stores. And then just have a pair of scissors nearby. You'll want to have a dowel. Um, this will help you shape cylindrical items like making little arms or stuff like that. You can obviously, I think I've used um, a paintbrush or something like that. So have a little piece of dowel nearby. And then when you start a felting craft, you um, can, a lot of um, tutorials will have you start with uh, something to use as the, the main body or, you know, the inside. That, that can be hard to find. I think some people use foam, some people use styrofoam. That is one that I got in a felting kit. But what I like to do so that I'm not hindered um, at all is I'll just make the, the um, initial inside form myself. And what I use, 
for that is this stuff here and this is just yarn that's only partially spun and um, the reason I use this is just because it's so much cheaper than real yarn. So you can use yarn. It's good if you use yarn that is at least partially real wool. And if you can get your hands on this, in Iceland they called it lopi, L-O-P-I, which just means um, partially spun yarn or partially spun wool. Um, it's so cheap and one roll like this I think cost me about $2 and I'll use this to make all kinds of forms for all kinds of felting projects. To start the little owl project, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, lopi or unspun, partially spun wool, and I'm just going to start wrapping it up in order to create a small sphere that I will use for the body of my owl. Okay, so I've got my ball of yarn or of lopi here, and if you want to do a round owl like this guy, you can stop there. You've got your your form. Um, um, what I'm going to do is I want to make something that can kind of sit up on its own, so it's a little bigger on the bottom and then gets a little smaller on the top. So I'm just going to add a little bit more lopi on top to give him sort of a chunky bottom, and um, so I'm just going to do that quickly. So now what we have are these two balls of the lopi or the yarn or whatever you're using and we're just gonna we don't want I don't want the owl to sort of be body and head so I'm gonna take them I'm gonna press them together I'm gonna take my felting needle now these needles come in um, different sizes you can get fine or coarse um, I'm usually using a fine needle because I just find them easier to work with but for something like this, where you're sort of still forming the body, a coarse needle is um, effective, very effective. So yeah, I kind of want this owl to be not a separate head and body, but just sort of one lumpy shape. And this is also good even if you just made the initial shape um, with one thing of yarn, like if you just had one ball of yarn, it's still good to poke that um, with your felting needle just to get this all sort of tangled up and condensed and just make it a little firmer. So you're just gonna do this a lot. Okay, so I've got this somewhat, you know, a little bit tangled up and condensed. Just did a little bit of poking there with my needle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of roving, and you can use any color. I'm gonna use this cream color here. I'm gonna take a pretty nice big chunk and I'm gonna wrap it right around the body and it doesn't have to be perfect if you get a section where you see a little bit through that's fine because you can add on more roving uh, later and you'll never see it so it doesn't need to be perfectly even we can patch things up because of the way you're constantly condensing um, you're not going to see any small you know you can always add on more stuff it's sort of it's like you're working with with clay you can add and take away and we're just going, it looks just like this crazy big blob, but as I was saying, um, when you're poking it with the needle, when you're jabbing it repeatedly, you're tangling and condensing all those wool fibers. So this whole thing is going to get smaller and it's going to get firmer. And we're just going to work with it until we get, you know, this nice shape for our owl. And just do be careful when you're poking that needle in. There is a mat you can buy. It sort of looks like a brush and you can set your project onto the mat and then jab into it. I don't have one of those, um, but they are a good idea because I do poke myself. Not a lot, but often enough, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just gonna work with this. As I said, can be a little tedious, um, but it's really fun as well. So we'll just keep poking away and I will show you what it looks like as we go through this process. Okay, you can really see how this is starting to come together now. I've been sort of poking from the top down a lot so that the head, um, so that those two balls that I made really come together and the head and body aren't separate. And I've added in um, some extra roving on the sides there. So I think it's looking good and I'm sort of achieving this sort of little lumpy, chunky owl um, that's looking pretty cute. 
and um, I just need to keep on um, condensing because right now he's still quite fuzzy. I think if you guys can see that on the video. And anytime you have a little bit of that extra fuzz, when you get down to the finished product, it can help to give it a little snip snip trim um, with scissors. But usually that means that it still needs to be condensed and, and shaped and just generally poked a little bit more. Um, so I've just got a little bit further to go. And then what I will have is a great place to begin um, the sort of project. I'll have this nicely shaped body that is the color I want it to be. And then I can just add in, you know, all the fun parts, all the detail, all the wings and the eyes and all that cute stuff. So I just have a little bit farther to go with my shaping and condensing of the form. Um, but I've only been working on this for about five minutes. So it's not like I went and watched a movie and then, and then turned the camera back on and was like, okay, I did it. You know, it's no, it doesn't take that long. And especially as you become more proficient with this crafting technique, you'll find that you can shape these initial forms quite quickly and, uh, and you'll get the shape that you desire without too much trouble. So we've got that pretty much all shaped and now once you have your owl's body finished there you're going to want um, to sort of pick okay where am I going to put the front like what looks as good as his that'll be his front side there and then you're going to take a second color um, if you've done the body ivory I find or cream like I have I find it's nice to work with um, browns or I'm going to use a light gray you could do dark gray you can do any color you want and you're going to take a small section of this contrasting color and we are going to do something very similar to what you see on this little guy here and we're going to form the outline of his face um, which is basically a heart shaped and this owl is a little bigger so we're going to make this owl's heart shaped face a little wider um, a little, maybe a little less heart shaped, but right there on his forehead, you're going to take this long piece like that. And we're going to take, sort of find the middle of his forehead. You've chosen which side of this you want to be the front side. And we're just going to poke that there. Okay. Is that a good spot? I think so. This is a little tricky to do on camera, but that's okay. So we're gonna find that middle spot and poke that in. And the great thing about um, felting is that you are con condensing these, these fibers. So you can take a big, you know, fluffy piece like this and you can turn it into a very thin, fine line. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna start creating our heart shape. And it's almost like drawing. You're taking this needle and you're gonna make your heart shaped area for this guy's face. And we can kind of predict like, okay, that's going to go around like that and just work with it. Okay, so you can see the heart shape is coming along there. And don't worry about getting it perfect either. That's another thing about this time of crafting. You don't have to get everything exactly right on the first. Like this doesn't, this heart shape doesn't need to be exactly perfect just because that's what I'm working on right now. What I actually think is I kind of want to get, get that heart on there. Um, and then we'll start working around it. And then if we need to shape it or reshape it a little, we're going to be able to see that a little better, um, the more components that we actually add on. So for now, I like the way it looks. Maybe it's got a little too pointy at the bottom there. Um, it needs a little more work, but for now it's a good start. So we've got our heart shape, um, and that helps to make it, you know, give it that look of an owl. The point of the heart sort of is the, is the point of his brows. And then we do his little eyes in there. And right away you can see it turning into this cute little creature. So now that we've got the face shape, what we're going to do is take the same color, whatever color. So I'm doing light gray. We're going to take a good size piece there. Just rip off a chunk. And we're going to start again right in that point of his brows where you um, have the the point of the heart and we're going to give put give him some color and this is going to basically be his wings and his back and it's going to start at the at the heart at the crown of his 
head or at his brow and go back and it can sort of just cascade down the side like wings. So I'm going to need a bigger piece. I like to start with a good sized piece. It's, it's not very time effective to constantly be adding on more pieces. So there's a good piece and we're going to add that on. Start right there. Do, do, do. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to just felt this into place. We're just going to join up the side a little with the side of the heart and then right at the bottom you kind of let it separate away from that initial line and that's where the wings are. Or that's where the wings meet his breast I guess you could say. And you can make this the wing a very straight and definitive line or you can make it very sort of you know it fades from cream to gray or from cream to beige whatever you think looks best. I think both look pretty and, and natural. A lot of people that um, enjoy felting create really quite realistic animals, um, which is kind of cool. Um, but I tend to like sort of making up my own little creatures. Uh, I think that's just the um, artist in me. I like to have fun designing what I think a really cute owl would look like um, as opposed to, you know, trying to get it um, the realism of the species or whatever but um, that's what that's up to you that's what's uh, cool about crafting you can really make it into whatever you want and any excess um, that you have anytime you can just pull off just gently pull it off and if you have any bald spots um, as I said it's easy you just <laughs> stick some more roving on there and felt it in and you'll never notice. And um, also keep in mind that it's never too late to continue shaping your project. So even though we made that initial body with the um, unspun wool or the yarn or partially spun wool, uh, you can continue that shaping process. So say I thought, oh, his breast really should be a little chubbier, a little fuller. I can just take a piece of um, cream colored roving and just stick that right on there and, ro and uh, felt it in. And you're always continuously shaping, even though we've begun with the shaping of the body and now we're sort of working on the owl's coloring, um, we can still continue that shaping pro process. If you want to create a nice definitive wing along the side of the breast there, I find to create, anytime you want to create a line, it helps to take your needle and sort of drag it and poke it. So drag those fibers together and poke along the line that you're trying to create and you'll see it come together. So this side is a little less done. You can kind of okay, so this guy is looking good and what we are going to do now is take some very tiny pieces of either a black or a dark gray and we're just going to sort of ball them up a little bit and we're going to make those spots that go on his breast and you'll probably find when you do this that you either take one that's way too small and when you actually go to stick it it just kind of like disappears right in to the cream color or you'll take one that's a little too big like I just did and when you do that it's a good idea to just cut it instead of trying to like rip it all apart and make a new one cut it in half you can use the other half for the next spot and then just stick it in there and that it goes really quite quickly and it's not a big big deal to do that where's the other half there it is and you can place them kind of all over or you can do like a bit more of a pattern like I've done here where I've done the five. Actually, I think that one's still a bit big and you can just pull it off. And you see how it's sort of not an exact science. And we'll just repair the damage we did by pulling it off and put a new one on. So I'm gonna do a couple of those and then we'll work on his little face. Okay, so I finished his little spots on his belly. I love the way it looks. I've done it a little more at random than my other little guy. Now it's time to add his eyes. So I've got some really nice jet black roving here. 
and that's what I'll be using because he's going to have these dark, um, dark, dark eyes that will really bring him to life and make him look like an owl. And I'm going to, I've ripped off a few little pieces. I'm going to ball these up. Sometimes it helps to actually wet your hand or your palm a little to, um, to make uh, the roving into a little ball. And we're gonna just get them the same size. Okay, there we go. I've got two little balls of roving here that are about the same size. It doesn't matter if they're exact. Um, and we are going to sort of place them here. I'll just felt them, like I'll just place them there ever so lightly and just give them a little stick. And they're gonna be at the center, not too close together, but not too far apart. And I think that looks about right. And once you've sort of placed them, you can sort of get a feel for it. And before you go so far as to felt them in completely, you can just kind of place them, make sure you like the way they look. Of course, they're gonna be a little too big because everything gets a little smaller as you felt it, but you can see there, that sort of looks right. And um, once you've got them on there and you like the look, you can go ahead and really felt them into place. And that's what I'm gonna do now. And I'm just going for quite round eyes, pretty round, slightly oval or slightly almond shaped. Okay, the time has come to add the beak. I think the eyes are looking good, um, just a note when I was doing the eyes, you know, this guy is pretty much all felted together now But until I'm completely done, I don't felt things in totally So I'll still maybe say oh, you know the eyes aren't quite centered I could use a little white over here and I kind of pull the the roving back and felt it into place again So don't feel like you need to do things step by step You can always sort of change and morph your little guy as you're going along. So this is looking pretty good I'm gonna add on the beak for the beak, you can use any range of colors. Um, I've got some yellow to orange to brown. Any of those will work really well. And when you are looking for roving, if you're buying it from a wool mill, you'll probably get it in these you know, huge puffs. Um, but if you're buying it at a craft store, sometimes it comes in these spirals. And it might not look like it's a lot of roving, but this actually is uh, quite a good amount and you get all these different colors. I think this was actually a bit larger with different colors on it. So those are kind of fun and it gives you a good selection. I think for this guy's beak, hmm, I think I'm gonna use this medium color here and I'm just gonna pull off the tiniest little piece. And we will just start working with a small amount. If it helps, you can lick your fingers or get them a little bit wet to help you ball up. And I just usually make a little, a little piece like that. And then of course you're gonna shape it into something of a, a triangle. And it just work with it like the eyes, kind of get it in place. Right between the eyes, just beginning sort of right, um, at the bottom, sort of where the eyes end, that's where this your little beak is gonna begin. And then you just start, start working it and shaping it and felting it into place. And it's okay if you pick a piece that's too small, I think that'll probably be one of your biggest mistakes as you get started, because you just lose so much of it as it gets poked together and tangled and condensed and becomes one with the rest of your little sculpture. Um, you lose a lot of the body and a lot of the volume. So you'll probably need to add in more roving as you work and that's not a big deal. So I'm gonna work with this little piece and you see how I'm shaping it here with my fingers as I'm felting it and that helps um, to get things this shape and the look that you want. So I'm just gonna felt his little beak into place here and then he's all done. Um, and if you want, when you finish, you can add little spots on his back, just grabbing little pieces of dark gray or white or whatever color and felting on little circles and dots, or you could do stripes or anything. And that would actually be really good practice um, to do that. So I will get this guy all finished. And, uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. 
And that's how you make the needle felted owl. I hope you'll give needle felting a try. And if you do, please uh, share your projects with me. You can post them on my Facebook page at The 11th Apartment. And if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I will see you next week with a new video tutorial. Thanks for watching.